Hey Science Ninjas, today I'm going to show you how to make an alcohol powered bottle rocket launcher. Better bring your ear protection because these puppies are a loud and exciting way to teach your kids about the chemistry of combustion. Let's go! To build your rocket launcher, all you need are these five simple items. A long stem barbecue lighter, approximately 20 centimeters of PVC piping with an exact external diameter of 0.5 inches, 99% pure isopropyl alcohol with a small funnel, several 2 liter pop bottles, each with their very own bottle cap, a small 100 milliliter beaker or measuring cup, and lastly, the sliced top of another 2 liter pop bottle. Make sure you have a bike pump handy as well. And if you want your bottle rocket to really fly super extra size ninja far, consider buying strato rocket fins or 3D printing the equivalent. Building your bottle rocket launcher is super easy. All you have to do is get your PVC pipe like so and slide it tightly along your lighter, making sure it's friction locked. A little dab of glue gun won't hurt. Then you're gonna get your uh, top of your pop bottle and you're gonna slide it in like so together. Future Darren here. If you're using Strato rocket fins, you won't be able to use the sawed off plastic bottle. However, by doing this, you better wear safety gloves because the flame exhaust of these rockets gets really hot. Then lastly, you're gonna get your bottle rocket and you're gonna make sure it can slide in over the PVC pipe snugly, but can still release easily. There you go. You have yourself a bottle rocket launcher. Lastly, prep your bottles. Pour approximately 40 mils of rubbing alcohol into your two liter pop bottles. Seal the bottles with their caps and vigorously shake to vaporize the alcohol inside. Ensure every part of the inside of the bottle is covered in isopropyl alcohol rocket fuel. Next, unseal the bottle you want to launch and pour all the liquid out. For maximum lift off, all that is needed is the fumes of the fuel to be combusted for a safe and powerful liftoff. Once your bottle rocket launcher is ready to go, make sure that your bottle rockets are well aerated. We found the best way to do this is simply to use a bike pump and give it five good pumps. One, two, three, four, five pumps to get the optimal oxygen to fuel mixture. Now, if you're like us and you forgot to bring your bike pump to the rocket launch outside, no problem. Some of these, or lots of these, are a good way to ensure that you have an optimal combination of oxygen to fuel. Give it a try and get ready to launch some awesome rockets. To avoid blowing up anything else, including your classroom, let's take these rockets outside and see how far they can really fly. Welcome to Robert Burnaby Park. Regularly, this is a nice leisurely place to spend a sunny afternoon, but today it's going to be our site for launching our alcohol bottle rocket. All right, so what we have here is our two liter bottle. We have some straddle fins attached and we have a massive hill. Let's see what happens when we put them all together. Three, two, one. Woo! Look at that gaggo! Phew! If you're failing to launch, check out the description below to get some tips on how to get your rockets flying high again. So what sort of chemistry is happening inside these bottles? To answer this question, my videographer Alden and I turned my garage into a bottle rocket launch pad, complete with runway lights. Right away, we were able to gather some really intriguing slow-mo footage. But as you can see, the rocket launches were too fast and chaotic to really see what was going on inside the bottle. In theory, we knew that the combustion of isopropyl alcohol was certainly occurring, and that according to the balanced equation, this reaction had to be very oxygen-hungry and fuel-efficient. 
for this reaction to optimally occur, nine oxygen molecules are required to combust with only two corresponding molecules of isopropyl alcohol fuel. When there is complete combustion, there is an ample amount of exhaust gases and energy produced. In our case, six carbon dioxide molecules, eight gaseous water molecules, and lots of energy. Even with just the fumes of the isopropyl alcohol, a staggering amount of exhaust and heat is almost instantly produced in this combustion reaction, so much so that it can propel our bottle well over 50 feet in the air. To make this intensely fast reaction even more visible, we decided to perform this reaction with even more fuel in a much larger container. At regular speed, this combustion reaction was also super fast, but check out what we captured in slow-mo. You may notice that the combustion reaction starts with a gorgeous blue line. My physics teacher friend explained to me that this is called the flame front. It is at the start of the flame front where a beautiful blue flame first forms. This is the perfect intersection of optimal amounts of heat, fuel, and oxygen, resulting in what is called complete combustion. Note that the flame front moves forward as the heat generated just before creates the optimal condition for the next section of fuel and oxygen to combust. As this flame front progresses forward, less and less oxygen is available in the container. This is where we start to see the orange flame, an indicator of incomplete combustion. In this type of reaction, the lesser amount of oxygen still combines with the isopropyl alcohol, but produces slightly different products of carbon monoxide, water, elemental carbon, and still tremendous amounts of energy. The temperatures at the site of the incomplete combustion are still so hot, it burns the elemental carbon, causing incandescence, similar to what you would see in a burning candle or a campfire. Eventually, there is so little oxygen left, the only type of combustion that can occur is incomplete combustion, which is why you see those beautiful orange fingers of flame being produced within and outside the bottle. You may also notice that the bottle at first creates a continuous flame, but then subsequently sputters. The flames temporarily stop when there is insufficient oxygen present in the vessel, but this also creates a temporary drop in pressure, which causes oxygen outside the bottle to rush in, which in turn fuels the next wave of flame. The reaction will continue to occur until all available fuel and oxygen is used up. So now, thanks to the gift of slow-mo photography and my wonderful physics teaching mentor, Philip Friedman, you now know the chemistry of combustion happening inside your Science Ninja bottle rocket. So there you have it, your very own inexpensive and super powerful Science Ninja bottle rocket launcher. Let me know in the comments how far you were able to blow these puppies with your students. Till then, keep being a Science Ninja in your classroom.